In the early 1900s, Harrison Gray Otis was the president and general manager of the Times Mirror Company, publisher of the Los Angeles Times, and his family would continue this publishing dynasty up through his great-grandson, Otis Chandler. Otis Chandler's mother was Dorothy Chandler, a Los Angeles cultural leader and promoter of the performing arts, who was the primary force in creating the Los Angeles Music Center. On opening night, December 6, 1964, she hired 24-year-old Zubin Mehta to lead the Los Angeles Philharmonic. She said that night, We have given it bricks and mortar. Now we must give it a soul. The Dorothy Chandler Pavilion is named in her honor. Hers was a prominent family and the story of Los Angeles. But let's go back to her grandfather-in-law, Harrison Gray Otis, the patriarch of this publishing empire. In the early 1900s, the area of the San Fernando Valley, now known as Tarzana, was given to large-scale farming. This area was purchased in 1909 by the Los Angeles Suburban Homes Company, based on inside knowledge that the Los Angeles Aqueduct would irrigate it. The Los Angeles Aqueduct was completed in 1913, bringing water from the Owens Valley. But water wasn't permitted for San Fernando Valley use until the valley was annexed into the city of Los Angeles in 1915. Harrison Gray Otis was an investor in the Los Angeles Suburban Home Company and also personally acquired 550 acres in the center of what is modern-day Tarzana. In February 1919, Edgar Rice Burroughs, author of the popular Tarzan novels, arrived in California with his family, relocating from Oak Park, Illinois. He and his family had vacationed in Southern California twice before, and he enjoyed the climate, and so purchased Otis's 550-acre tract for $125,000 and established Tarzana Ranch. His Tarzana Ranch had a 4,500-square-foot hacienda with 20 rooms, gardens, fields, and fruit orchards. A couple of years later, he set aside 100 acres to create a community which he called Tarzana and the community chose the name Tarzana as well, which became official in 1930 when the Tarzana Post Office was opened in a store on Ventura Boulevard. A drugstore, grocery store, and a few other small stores were grouped together on Ventura Boulevard at Reseda Boulevard, surrounded by many acres of small farms. This intersection was town center. The population of Tarzan at the time was about 300. I'm right across the street from the Black Bear Diner. And right here at 18354 Ventura Boulevard, these are the offices of Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated. And when Edgar Rice Burroughs passed away in 1950, he was cremated and his ashes were buried underneath a walnut tree in the front of his business. So this very tree right here is probably the tree under which the ashes of Edgar Rice Burroughs are buried. The estate of Edgar Rice Burroughs had frontage on Ventura Boulevard from right where this tree is, which is where his offices are, going down about 1,000 feet to the intersection in the distance, which is Reseda. So this 1,000 feet of 
Ventura Boulevard was all part of the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate. And it went south all the way to Mulholland Drive. This street here that tees into Ventura Boulevard, the sign is right up here. And this is called Avenida Hacienda, which su that suggests that the Hacienda that Edgar Rice Burroughs built, his home called Tarzana Ranch, uh, this street seems to be named after that. So we'll walk down to this intersection here. So this is the intersection of Ventura Boulevard and Reseda Boulevard. And back in the 1920s, this was the center of town for Tarzana. At this location in the 1920s, they had a small grocery market, a drugstore, and a post office, among perhaps a few other small businesses. But uh, one street east of Reseda Boulevard is this street right here named Otis Avenue. And this is named after Harrison Gray Otis, because if you take this street right here, it's right off and straight down that way. If you go down about four blocks, that used to be the entrance to Harrison Gray Otis's estate. That was a dirt road back in 1911. And if you took that road down about four blocks, you would come to the driveway of his residence. And of course, that's the area where the Hacienda was built by Edgar Rice Burroughs. I'm at Reseda and Otis Avenue right now. And everything to the south of us here was part of the Harrison Gray Otis estate, which then became the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate. But Otis Avenue led to the house. And as I mentioned, this was a dirt road back when Harrison Gray Otis owned it. Now, this was all part of the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate. But the house, of course, was set back from the street quite a ways. I mean, when you own 550 acres, you can afford to have a nice setback from a major street. The hacienda that Edgar Rice Burroughs built was on a knoll. And as we get closer here to the knoll, which is about one block away, you can see it here in front of us. But Otis Avenue tees into Tarzana Drive down here And so the hacienda, the 4,500 square foot hacienda, would have been built atop this hill right here. Edgar Rice Burroughs lived in the estate for only a few years. In 1925, he moved to, I believe, Hollywood and after that, he moved uh, and lived in Malibu, Palm Springs. Then he came back to Tarzana and built a new house near the Hacienda. And he spent his final years in Encino. 
But during World War II, in his 60s, he was a war correspondent, a World War II war correspondent. Now, as we come up here, this marks the, basically the eastern boundary of the Tarzana Ranch. And now, of course, this area is a gated community. I believe this is the Tarzana Tract. These are beautiful homes up in the area just to the south of the hacienda that would have been owned by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And this housing area here is called Monte Verde. The main structure or the main house, the Hacienda, owned by Edgar Rice Burroughs, was apparently demolished in the 1930s. I don't know why, because it wouldn't have been very old, because it wasn't built until, I believe, 1923. When Edgar Rice Burroughs first moved on to the estate of Harrison Gray Otis, he lived in the what used to be the Harrison Gray Otis home until he built the Hacienda. So this is Mecca Avenue, which kind of is an extension of Reseda. And somewhere up and through here, that might even be it right there, is a gate which leads toward the Hacienda. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty certain that's true. I'll go back and take a look at it from the street. There are still some buildings uh, that were built by Edgar Rice Burroughs. There's a garage and a ballroom. And I think a movie theater room. These buildings are still there to this day, although they've been remodeled and renovated over time. But I think you can see from the street here, if you look up there, you can see the structures that are still there to this day that are part of the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate. Here is an aerial view, left center, of what remains today of the Tarzana Ranch. I'm here at the intersection of Yolanda Avenue and Ventura Boulevard because I had read that there was a marker here for Edgar Rice Burroughs. And when I first came down here, I was a little confused because right here, this pizzeria, this is 18663 Ventura Boulevard, and I found no marker on the sidewalk here. But what I didn't realize is that all of these stores are 18663 Ventura Boulevard. As a matter of fact, it goes all the way down to this sign right here, this whole building here. It's all 18663. Everything in the field of view right now is the same address. So I came down this way and there are three areas that are memorializing individuals that have passed. This is in loving memory of Anna and Harry Desmond. And there are also 
memorial bricks here. And then there's another area right here. And this says, in loving memory of Harriet Glickman. And below that it says, David, Steve, and Mike. And that makes me wonder if that's not uh, Mike Glickman, the realtor. I'm not even sure he's still in business, but years ago he had quite a few offices. And then there's other memorial bricks here as well. And if we come down to this area here, you can see that there's two giraffes, which might suggest Africa. Because right here is a memorial tablet for Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs in memory, 1875 to 1950. Creator of Tarzan of the Apes in 1911, named his ranch Tarzana in 1919. His 100 plus stories have continued to inspire millions all over the world. Notice the relief on the top of this tablet showing Tarzan and a lion. Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote 80 novels in his lifetime, but he is perhaps best known for his 25 books on Tarzan, his first book on the subject being Tarzan of the Apes, released in book form in 1914. It was phenomenally successful, and Tarzan remains one of the most well-known fictional characters to this day.